Now, we have seen a real shift to the idea of back-to-basics food shopping since COVID-19 hit and the desire to avoid huge lineups at the bigger grocery stores. So this has caused the specialty stores to really step up. La Tana on Commercial Drive is an alimentari. It's a convenience store with all the staples of Italian eating. And Phil Scarfoni is the culinary director. Phil, hello to you. Good to see you. Hi, Gloria. Good to see you, too. Okay, so tell us about the impact on your business. And I know you're involved with restaurants as well and businesses since the pandemic hit. Yeah, so we've, uh, we've had to pivot pretty hard here. Um, we've both uh, transported um, Savio Volpe and uh, Pepinos to uh, takeout and uh, DoorDash delivery, which is something that I never thought would be in the cards for us. So, yeah, it's been interesting for sure. And what about Latana? How are you able to reach out to, to your customers who are looking for some, some staples for their homes? So we were really fortunate with Latana because we have a, a, a grocery license. So we were able uh, to stay open. And we've uh, done a full pivot into an online grocery order and uh, contactless delivery uh, service, which has been amazing. Well, I was talking about the long lineups at the big big box stores and the big supermarkets and that type of thing. I mean, what are your customers buying? Are you noticing any trends or changes in tastes? Yeah, um, the customers are really going for our fresh pasta. Uh, we have a pasta extruder at Savio and we, um, you know, we're crushing fresh pasta every day. We're doing stuffed noodles and then we have a lot of specialty Italian ingredients that you can't find in the big box stores. So people are going for that for sure. What kinds of specialty Italian ingredients? Do tell. Oh, we've got um, a whole bunch of beautiful cheeses. We've got Pecorino Romano. We've got a uh, 24 month aged uh, Parmigiano Reggiano. A lot of specialty uh, sauces that we make in house. Um, we do kale pesto, bolognese. Uh, we do our own Alfredo sauce from Pepino's. So. Yeah, that's what people are after these days, comfort food. Now, I understand you've got a little something that you're going to share with us today in terms of something you could put together at home. Absolutely, yeah. So what have um, you got? I'll flip you around here. All right, um, so we're going to do a little bit of cacanelle, which is uh, this little noodle here. Uh, these are little bells, so it's actually a long noodle disguised as a short noodle. Um, <laughs> so I've got a few of these already blanched off here. I'm just going to put them in boiling water. So um, with fresh pasta, it's a little bit different. It doesn't take as long to cook. So we'll just bring it up to the heat. And then I've got a, a kale pesto. So basically at the restaurant, we make three different pestos. Uh, we do um, kale in the winter, arugula in the spring when it's growing, and then we do basil in the summer. Just put that in here. That looks gorgeous. Okay, what's in that pesto? Is it similar that similar that what you would do with a, a basil pesto? Is it's got the garlic and the oil? What else? Yep, it's got pine nuts, uh, pecorino, and a little bit of lemon zest. Mm. Um, and I'm just putting it in a mixing bowl because I'm not gonna really cook it out that much more. So once the pasta is cooked, which only takes a while because I par cooked it. There we go. Then we'll just put it right in with the pesto. Oh, that looks it's wonderful. <laughs> it's, it's actually delicious. I'm actually going to eat this for lunch right after. So. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I miss most about not being in studio, that you're not doing this right next to me and we can, I can have a sample afterward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're just going to mix it around here. There we go. You can see it's starting to coat. And then I'll take some of the pasta water. Everyone knows this trick. Uh, where you just take the pasta water and put it in. And that helps the pasta from drying out, right? Exactly. It's going to create, like, instead of, like, that olive oily glaze, it's going to be nice and kind of smooth and rich. Um, and it won't be oily at all. So we're going to go over. I'm just going to make sure it's all mixed here. And then we'll go over to the plate. And the plating is pretty pretty straightforward. There's nothing fancy. Uh, we're just going to get it onto the bowl or onto the plate here. There we go. Gorgeous. So we're there. Lots of pesto, obviously. Look at that intense green bowl. color. So what? So what do you put with it? Yeah. A little salad? Beautiful. Yeah, there's a little bit of uh, arugula from Zachlin Heritage Farm. It's first of the season arugula, so it's quite small and tender. That's going to go on top. And then I've got some oven dried tomatoes here. Just cherry tomatoes halved and then cooked with uh, olive oil and salt. Uh, it really brings out their sweetness. And some breadcrumbs to finish. 
Oh, breadcrumbs, yeah, just to get a little bit of a different texture on there? Yeah, exactly. You're, uh, so we'll give you the bump shot here. Um, that yeah, is are great gorgeous. Because, uh, otherwise, everything is the same texture. Uh, so you want to give your mouth something exciting to, uh, to eat. So. <laughs> Hey, those, that's a wonderful idea. I, I wish you a, a buon appetito. Thank you so much for joining us, Phil. And uh, no, I appreciate it. And, and in studio next time with samples, okay? Absolutely. Sounds good.